Even with all the information we have in 2024, there are still old and outdated fitness myths that need to die, starting with myth one. Recently, I had a phone consultation and their biggest struggle when sticking to a diet was the perceived necessity to eat a bunch of times throughout the day. If they had a choice, they would eat two bigger meals with a snack or two in between. I asked them what was wrong with this approach because I actually liked it and they said they were told a long time ago that eating five or six meals a day will keep their metabolism running and will help them lose more fat. While eating smaller meals may keep some people full, others may just end up overeating because of it, and this was the case with my client. Ironically, this also happened with me as well. If I try eating a bunch of smaller meals, I get hungry in between meals and end up overeating or snacking on other foods during some of those meals. However, when I eat two to three bigger meals per day, I am fuller and drastically reduce my risk for overeating or snacking. Also, this won't keep your metabolism running, making you lose more fat. Weight loss comes down to calories in and calories out. Notice I didn't say fat loss, which we will go over in depth later in the video. If you are burning more calories than you are taking in, which is a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. Assuming an equal protein intake, individuals consuming 2,000 calories in six meals or 2,000 calories in three meals will experience equivalent weight loss. Find the amount of meals that fits your lifestyle and makes you feel full and go with that. Speaking of feeling full, let's go to myth number two. What I wish someone had told me at the start of my nutrition journey was to simply substitute the high calorie foods for their low calorie counterparts and still enjoy the foods that I love. While I can temporarily stick to eating chicken, broccoli, and rice, after a couple of weeks, I don't feel satiated from those foods and my hunger grows for all of the foods I know and love. This would cause me to eventually give in and binge eat on an assortment of foods when this all could have been avoided if I knew I could still have pizza, ice cream, and tostadas if I just used smarter ingredients. All of these meals not only fill my stomach up, but keep me satiated, which means I am rarely hungry when dieting and can stick to these type of foods for a lifetime. You don't need to be hungry while you are losing weight. Now, there are some outliers that make it impossible to avoid hunger, such as bodybuilders competing at single digit body fat or people that permacut for extended periods of time with no breaks. Think five months plus or even years, it AKA they're always on a cut when you ask them. However, if you build well-structured fat loss phases with a proper meal plan or work with a knowledgeable coach who will do this for you, you can avoid hunger all around. This goes hand in hand with the third outdated myth that suffering is just part of the process. Again, if you are single digit body fat, there will definitely be suffering, but many of the people watching this video aren't in that situation. Most of you just wanna to get to a normal or healthy body weight while adding some muscle in the process. This is doable without suffering through every day. In 2024, you can have a breakfast burrito for your first meal, a McChicken meal prep for lunch, and pizza for dinner with fruits and vegetables added wherever you would like while still losing fat. There will be a couple of hours per week where you will have to meal prep, but no one will be complaining when they are able to eat all the fun foods they were eating before, but now losing weight while doing so. Suffering doesn't have to occur with exercise either. Hate running? Go for a walk with your dog. Hate cardio machines? Go play your favorite sport. Don't like weight training? Try at-home workouts using body weight. Just find whatever kind of exercise works for you and stick to a number of workouts per week that is realistic and maintainable with your free time and goals. Many of the clients who join my one-on-one -on -one coaching or order a personalized plan have already incorporated intermittent fasting into their routines. For those that don't know, intermittent fasting is when someone limits their food consumption to a certain period of the day. One of the most common protocols being 16-8 or 16 hours of fasting fasting with an eight hour feeding window. When answering the questionnaire of why they enjoy their current diet, a common answer is because their body goes into starvation mode, causing more fat burning, thus more fat loss, and that it increases autophagy or cleaning of the cells. While it is true that both fat burning and autophagy increases during fasting, 
It also decreases just as much when you start eating again, balancing the two out. Coincidentally, being in a calorie deficit is what increases autophagy the most, regardless of when you choose to eat. Now, I am not saying intermittent fasting is bad or useless. I have personally used it with success, and it is a great tool to use if it helps you sustain a calorie deficit or control your calorie intake. But it is no better than any other type of diet when calories and protein are equated. When I first started working out, I thought eating more protein meant more muscle gain. I would pound protein shakes and eight to 12 ounce pieces of chicken like it was my job. Most days getting in over three 100 grams of protein. Did I get jacked and swollen? Absolutely not. After going to college and studying exercise science for my bachelor's and master's degree, I was taught one gram of protein per pound of body weight maximized muscle building. Since then, more data has come out and one gram is actually overkill in many cases. Now, it is easier to round up for example purposes and just say one gram per pound of body weight. In reality, 0.8 grams per pound of body weight is sufficient in almost all cases and that is with me rounding up. This means a 200 pound person would need about 160 grams of protein instead of 200 grams. Now, a 40 gram difference may not seem significant, but from my interactions with clients and messages I receive, many struggle to meet their daily protein goals. Not only is this 40 gram decrease easier to hit, those calories can be spent on carbohydrates, which are much better utilized by the body for energy. And that extra energy will come in clutch throughout the day, during a workout, and towards muscle building. It is definitely worth mentioning, this is an even bigger myth for someone who may be 300 or 400 pounds. In this instance, we can just use one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. This may sound confusing, but to make it simple, in most cases, eating anywhere from 140 to 200 grams of protein per day would be sufficient depending on your gender and how often you work out. Speaking of workouts, when I started going to the gym, I was in the mindset if I didn't go five days per week, there wasn't a point in going at all. Or if I missed a day, I completely derailed my week somehow. Yeah, I know, makes no sense. There was even a point where I lifted seven days a week with a ton of volume because I thought more, was better. Not only is this not true, it could be harmful in multiple ways. Training every day isn't sustainable for, I mean, anyone. It not only means you have no rest days for your body to recover, but you have to make time every single day to go to the gym and give high level effort. Many people will hear this and quit before even starting. And even if they do go seven days a week, they are putting themselves at a higher risk for injury and burnout where they end up quitting after just a few weeks at most. Although a well-written five-day training split can produce great results, by no means is five days necessary. You can still see great results, sometimes just as good as a five-day plan, training just three days per week. How could you get five days worth of results in three days? Well, the scenario usually goes like this. You have newfound motivation because it's New Year's or a vacation is coming up and you tell yourself five days per week will be no problem. You are getting to the gym all five days the first couple weeks, but between the soreness, the meal prepping, and life in general, you start going three days per week. The three workouts are solid and the effort is there, but you are hitting random workouts that hit some of the same muscle groups while not training other muscle groups at all, which isn't ideal. Instead, if you programmed three days per week with each muscle group getting worked multiple times per week and no longer skipping workouts, your results will be better point blank. With that said, train as many days as you realistically can, whether that be at home or in the gym. I have tried many a diets over the last 10 plus years, one of which being keto. In just a couple of weeks, I hated my life and binged on a whole bag of Doritos and Oreos with milk. Needless to say, keto is not for me, but I have had friends and clients who have done keto for years and absolutely swear by it. Even though some people may tell you different, this just supports the fact that when we look at the scientific data, no one diet is perfect for everyone. I don't care if it's keto, vegan, 
intermittent fasting, carnivore, vegetarian, or amphibian. There are people who have their own biases, including myself, on what they think works the best. The truth is, the best diet is the one you are going to stick to long term, as in for years and years, or more specifically, for the rest of your life. We've all heard the stories of people losing 100 plus pounds in a year on keto or low carb, only for them to fall off the wagon and gain all the weight back and some when they just couldn't stick to it anymore. The reason I like flexible dieting, or if it fits your macros so much, is because there are really no limits or restrictions on what you do. For a couple of months, you could eat low carb, and then choose for the next couple of months to eat a Mediterranean diet, and then go on vacation and eat whatever you want around your maintenance calories. Not having restrictions on certain foods will make it far less likely you will go out and binge because those aren't off limits. That's honestly why I started making all the recipes I do on the channel and pack them into a cookbook that has nearly 140 recipes and counting. Binges are now non-existent because almost every day I am eating pizza, jumbo cheesecake muffins, or ice cream, aka I'm not missing out on anything. That being said, if someone came to me as a potential client and has eaten carnivore for three years and feels great, there is no reason for me to change anything they are doing. Putting them on a flexible dieting meal plan would just be setting them up for failure. At the end of the day, picking a diet you can adhere to for a long period of time is what matters, similar to a calorie deficit being the only thing that matters in a fat loss phase. However, that's not really true. Have you heard of the term skinny fat? Skinny fat can occur when someone gains weight over several years without having much muscle on their body. However, being skinny fat can also occur with weight loss. Many people who feel they are fat or overweight think that if they just lose 30 pounds, they will then be lean and muscular. In some circumstances, this could be true. For example purposes, person A is in a calorie deficit for 12 weeks but isn't working out or is just doing loads of cardio to lose even more weight. Now, they end up losing the 30 pounds, but then come to me because they just feel skinny and fat at the same time. This is because you can lose up to 40% of the weight from muscle depending on how much of a deficit you were in and how inactive you were. So instead of ideally losing 30 pounds completely from fat, they actually lost 18 pounds of fat, which is pretty damn good, but a whopping 12 pounds of muscle as well. Even losing 18 pounds of fat with that much muscle loss, many times you are physically smaller, but don't look any leaner in the mirror. So while it is true, being in a calorie deficit is the only way to lose weight, it is important to add in resistance training to your protocol so that you can keep most of, if not all of your muscle mass while you are working your ass off to drop weight anyway. And while supplements can help aid in a calorie deficit to lose fat a little bit quicker or give you more energy, they aren't the it factor that is going to make you go from not losing weight to having it disappear off your body. Have you ever bought a fat burner and just took it without doing anything else, thinking the fat is going to melt off by the end of the bottle? No, just me, figures. As someone who works with a supplement company and has tried a plethora of different supplements over my 10 years of lifting, I can tell you right now, if your training and diet is off, no amount of supplements will fix your problems for you. While supplements aren't magic, when used under the right circumstances, there are a few that can help an extra 5 to 10%. For example, I have taken a pre-workout for years, and a solid pre-workout will bring you more focus, energy, and motivation to your workouts, causing you to push harder. This will lead to more muscle growth and more calories burned, which over time can add up to an extra pound or two of fat loss. And when I forget my pre-workout, my workouts are noticeably more difficult, and when I'm three quarters of the way through the workout, my focus is not even close to where it would be if I had my pre. Another more situational example is a fat burner. A good fat burner will do two things makes you less hungry so you eat less calories and gives you more energy helping you burn more calories making for a greater calorie deficit. If you throw a fat burner in during the last four weeks of your cut, you can easily increase your calorie deficit by another one to 200 calories per day. This will result in an extra one to two pounds of fat loss and the benefits are amplified since this will make the most difficult part of the cut a bit easier. On the flip side, if you take a fat burner and eat whatever you want and think you will get shredded because it is called a fat burner, you will be sad with the results, like I was. 
as a young lad. This is why it is crucial to have a good meal plan going into a cut. You would be surprised, but you can easily fit a personal pizza into your diet, lose weight, and it only costs $1 per day to eat. In this video here, I show you how to do it with nothing but a spoon and bowl and has 100% positive feedback from all the people that have tried it. I'll see you there. Until next time, deuces.